In this lesson, we're gonna look at how to graph exponential functions, and then we'll also just look at domain and range. Now, I've got some really easy ways on how to graph an exponential, so let's have a look. So the first thing that I want you to understand is that exponential graphs, whether they look like this, or whether they go down, or I don't know, there's so many different variations, they could do things like that. They have asymptotes. They have one asymptote. That asymptote is a dotted line. To know what that asymptote is, you just have to look at this number over here. Okay, that's the first thing that you need to know. Besides that, it's pretty easy to be honest. So what you do is you get your graph, which I should have added in the beginning, um, and all you do is you look at this number, so that's your asymptote. So you're gonna say y equals to three, that's gonna be a horizontal asymptote, so you just put the dotted line. Come on, Kevin, one, boom. Okay, so there's your asymptote, okay? Fill that in, y equals to three. The next thing I want you to do is take the exponent, which is that part over there, make that equal to zero, okay? And then I want you to take that x value that you just got, because sometimes this isn't gonna be x, sometimes it's gonna be like x plus two. Trust me, in this video we have loads of examples. We have seven to be exact. So I want you to take that x equals to zero now, plug it into this equation, and see what you get for y. Okay, so y is equal to two, to the power of zero, add three, and so y is gonna be, two to the power of zero is one, add four, so y is four. Now, so when x is zero, y is four. Go put that on the diagram. When x is zero, y is four. The next thing I want you to do is just find one other point. So you could, for example, let x equal to one. Okay, so you let x equal to one, go plug it into that equation, and if you had to work that out, y would be five. So when x is one, y is five, so you go to x is one, y is five, put a little dot, and there we go. Now we know the exact shape, because you see this is an asymptote. Now the graph always goes very close to the asymptote, so some learners, they don't know, does the graph go like that, or does the graph go like that? Now it has to go through both of those, so it's definitely gonna do something like that. And then obviously, label this for your teacher, and there we go. Now we're just gonna do another six examples. So here we go, remember that the number over here is the asymptote, so if there is no number there, then you can think of it as y equals to zero, which is on the x-axis, so I'll shade it like that, just so you can see that there is an asymptote over there. Then the next step, so we've done the asymptote, right? That's step one. Step one, asymptote. Such a weird word. Step two, make the exponents exponent equal zero. So the exponent is just x, it's not always gonna be like that, as you'll see shortly. Okay, now what you do is you just go plug that into the equation, which is just gonna be one. So when x is zero, y is one, go put that on the graph, there it is. Next, you just need one other point, because right now you don't know if the graph's gonna do um, that, or if it's gonna do that. So we need one other point just to help us understand. So what we can do is you can, for example, let x equal to one. You could choose two or three or minus one, minus two, it doesn't really matter. I just like to choose one because it's easy. And then we're gonna go two to the power of one, which is two. So when x is one, y is two. Go put that on the diagram, there we go. Now we can instantly get the shape. There we go, go label those points. So this one would be zero and one. Uh, one and two. So here's the next one. So step one, look at the asymptote. It's a negative four. So you go down to negative four, fill that in, y equals to negative four. Next, take the exponent, make it equal to zero, and then go plug that into the equation. And so that's negative three. So when x is zero, y is negative three. So that would be over there. Now right now you still don't know if the graph's gonna do that, or maybe it's gonna do that. That's why we need another point. So I'm gonna let x equal to one. Let's go find y. And so that's gonna be a half take away four, which is negative 3.5. And so when x is one, y will be negative 3.5. So that would be over. Okay, so it's pretty easy to understand then that this graph is just gonna go I just realized that I forgot to show you the domain and range for the first examples. Let me start with this one and then I'll go back quickly, okay? I do apologize about that. So, but I do believe that um, I will flash little notes for you guys showing you that there was an example. So you probably know about it already. Okay, so for the domain, remember that the domain is your x values, okay? So if you look at, if you look at the x values of this graph, this graph can go all the way to the right, and it can go all the way to the left. 
So the domain will just be all the way from negative infinity up to positive infinity. If we look at the range, that's the y values. The range, can, the, the y values can go all the way up, but they cannot go below this number. They cannot go below that y value. See how it, it, it goes this way, but it cannot go across that number. So the lowest y value that this graph would ever have is negative four, and you're gonna use a round bracket because it actually never touches the asymptote, but the highest y value can go all the way up to infinity. Let's go back to the previous examples and just quickly get that done. So with this example, um, the domain would be negative infinity to positive infinity. It's always gonna be that for exponential. It always goes all the way left and all the way right. For the range, the lowest y value would be zero, the largest y value would be infinity. And this is the first example that we did. So for the domain, you've got it, negative infinity, positive infinity. For the range, the lowest y value would be positive three, the highest y value can go all the way up to infinity. Okay, now let's carry on. First step, look at the asymptote, positive two. So you're gonna put a positive two like that. Next step, make your exponent equal to zero, plug it into your equation. Remember this negative is not part of it, so you can do something like that if you want to. If they had a bracket there, then the negative two would be a part of it, but that's not what, we do have an example like that coming up. So this is gonna be y equals to negative one plus two, so y is equal to one. So when x is zero, y is one, go put that on your graph. Ooh, it's underneath. And then go find any other point. So let's say x equals to one, go plug it into your equation. And that's actually gonna give you zero. So when x is one, y is zero, there we go. Now it's easy, now you just go like this. Whoops, I took that corner too fast. Something like that. Fill in the coordinates, zero, one. Uh, this is one, zero. And the domain and range. Oh, by the way, so your teacher might have made a big deal about this negative. All that that negative does is it just flips the graph over. So if a normal graph goes like this, putting a negative there just flips it downwards, okay? But you would already find that by just following this method. Now, the domain. For any exponential, it's just gonna be negative infinity up to positive infinity. For the range, now you always have to say the lowest one first. The lowest range, the lowest y value is gonna be negative infinity and then it's gonna go all the way up to this dotted line, which is positive one, okay? Here's a nice one because this is no longer just an x, but the steps stay the same. So you take this, you put that as your asymptote, so y equals to negative one. Okay, then I always said make your exponent equal to zero. So I don't just say make x equal to zero, the only reason for that was that the exponents were always equal to zero in the previous examples. You see that? Now, the exponent is x plus three, so make that equal to zero, and then make and then get x by itself, so x would be negative three. Take that and go put it into the equation. Hope that part makes sense. The reason I like to do that is because then this part always is zero, and that just makes the math so easy. So, so y would be equal to zero, because this is one, take away one. So if x is minus three, y is zero. So x is minus three, y is zero, so that's over there. Now just go choose any other point. So for example, we could choose x equals to one. Go plug it into your equation, two to the power of one plus three minus one. And so that's gonna be, oh no, that's gonna be a huge number. That's gonna be 15. Okay, I don't want such a big number. Uh, let's choose, I want this to be fairly small. So let's make x minus two. Let's make x minus two. Because then, ah, oh, that's quite a cool little trick. So you can make your exponent equal to zero which is what we did earlier, and then try to make your exponent equal to one. That's pretty much what we've been doing actually up till now, check this out. Here we made x equal to zero, which was the exponent, then we made it equal to one. Here we made zero, then we made it equal to one, then we made zero, then we made it equal to one. So make the exponent equal to zero and one, and then quickly solve for x. Whoops, that's a two, Kevin. No, minus two, that is right. And then go plug that in. That just, you don't have to do this, but this just gives you the smallest numbers to deal with, and that just makes life better. You don't wanna be dealing with 732 million, and then you have to go plot like 732 million. It's just weird, okay? So um, two to the power, that, that's gonna become two to the power of one minus one, and so y is one. So when x is minus two, y is one. So when x is minus two, y is one. There we go, and now we can easily get the shape. 
we have two more examples. Okay, now, you see how they've done this three and this two like that? You cannot multiply those two together to become a six. What they're trying to show you was that this two has this exponent, okay? So they are together. So first step, asymptote. There it is at minus one. Let's go fill that in, and then just fill in y equals two, negative one. Then make your exponent equal to zero, and then also make your exponent equal to um, one, just like we saw in the previous one, that that's actually the best. Make it equal to one, make it equal to zero, and then go solve. So x equals to two, this one is x equals to three. Then go plug that into the equation. So y would become two to the zero, like that. So then y would be equal to three minus one, and so y is equal to two. So x is two, y is two. So x is two, y is two would go there. Then this one you plug in x equals to three, and so that means y is gonna be equal to six, because three times two is six, minus one, which is five. So x is three, y is five, x is three, y is five. Now that is enough information to be able to draw, so we can do something like that. And then always go and label those points, so three and five, and then two and two. Here's our last example. So your asymptote, minus one, and then make the exponent, which is x plus one, make that equal to zero, and make that equal to one. And so if you solve this, you get x equals to negative one, and so let's go plug that into this equation. So y will be equal to negative one. See how this is in brackets, so the negative mustn't go on the inside. So negative one plus one minus one. And so y would be equal to uh, negative a third to the power of zero, take away one. And so y would be negative one minus one. And so y would be negative two. So when x is negative one, y is negative two. So that's over there. I just realized I forgot the domain and range on the previous example. I will go back and do it. So if, okay, so y is negative two. Now we solve this one, x is zero. So go plug that in. And so y is gonna be negative a third, take away one. And so y is gonna be negative four over three, which is about one comma three, three. So when x is zero, when x is zero, y is negative one comma three, three, which is about, there. And so now we can see that this would have to go something like that. Now let's do the domain and then I'll go back to the previous one. So the domain is always going to be negative infinity to infinity. The range, so the lowest range would go all the way down to negative infinity. The largest range would go up to minus one, but it won't touch minus one. So we'll use a round bracket. So let's go back and do the domain and range of the two previous examples. So for this one, negative infinity to positive infinity. For the range, that would be the lowest is negative one, the largest is infinity, and then for this one, the domain would be negative infinity to positive infinity, and then the range is negative one to positive infinity. And that's it. Thanks for watching.